Are you guys getting as excited about Photokina 2016 as I am? If so, let's talk about it. All right, welcome back everyone. My name is Eric Marks with FindingMiddleEarth.com and today we're gonna to talk about Photokina 2016. So if you don't know what Photokina is, it's a huge photography event that happens uh, every other year. It takes place in Germany and it's one of the biggest events because that's typically the event where all of the biggest competitors like Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, it's where they typically release their newest flagship camera. Now, um, I've been a little bit confused going into this year's Photokina because Canon has already dropped their 5D Mark IV and Fuji already dropped their X-T2 and their X-Pro2 uh, before the event, so Fuji is pretty much already done their uh, their flagship and their X-Pro2 as well, uh, which is awesome by the way. The Fuji X-T2 is getting like raving reviews, it's an awesome camera. Um, if you look at some of the reviews now that people are getting their production models, the uh, low light focus acquisition and the AF tracking is like lightning fast. So that's super impressive. Fuji stuff is good to go. The Canon on the other hand, the 5D Mark IV is just a dud in my opinion. It's old technology. You know, it's just kind of the same old, same old thing that the 5D has always been. So, uh, I'm not too impressed with that. What I'm excited about is Nikon uh, and Sony as well, if, if they can really impress me. But so Sony and Nikon is who I'm looking forward to. But um, it scares me a little bit because Sony makes sensors for Nikon. So let me tell you why this concerns me a little bit. Um, Sony is apparently going to drop the next iteration of the Sony a7R Mark II, which has great dynamic range. It has 42 megapixels, so it, it, it has great image quality. I have, I've actually owned the Sony a7R Mark II. I just wasn't a fan of the firmware and the menu system, and it was just kind of slow to operate. Every time I would take a long exposure, the back of the screen would say processing for forever, and so I'm more than willing to give Sony a chance. I just want to see them get better and listen to their landscape photography customers. So let me get back to Sony sensors inside of Nikon cameras. So let's say that, that everyone expects Nikon to drop the D810 successor. It's apparently going to be called the D850. Uh, and everyone expects Sony to drop the A7R Mark III or the, uh, the A9, whatever they're going to call it. Uh, my concern is that I really don't think that Sony would allow Nikon to release their flagship camera at the same time that Sony releases theirs. Let me tell you why. Sony makes Nikon sensors. So would it really make sense for Sony to allow an immediate competition, right? An immediate competitor to enter the market on the same day that they're releasing their flagship camera. But if so, since Sony controls the sensor market, it would be much easier for Sony to say, yes, of course, we'll license you our sensor as always, Nikon, but you're under contractual agreement to not release the camera until the new Sony A7 series, or the A9, has gained some market share and some market value before you release the Nikon DSLR and just kill the market again. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if Sony and Nikon really are gonna release their flagships at the same time, or if Sony's gonna do what they might do, which is since we control the sensor market, you know, Sony's gonna say, hey, everyone has to hold up on their Sony sensor, you know, Nikon cameras or whatever you're gonna release with a Sony sensor in it until our new camera gains some market share. And then you can release yours in the first quarter of 2017. I hope they don't do that because I'm looking so forward to Photokina um, and I wanna see everybody's option. So, um, I don't know, that's a possibility. This video is just, I just wanted to make this video so we can all talk about it. I wanna get you know, everyone's opinions as well. Let's, let's start a fun conversation down in the comments and, and um, just get some possibilities and some rumors going. You know, I, I haven't even heard the latest rumors on the Sony stuff. A lot of people are saying that they're gonna ditch the A7 name and they're gonna go straight to the A9 and they're gonna create an A9 and an A9R. So just like they have the A7 and the A7R. Um, but let's talk about Nikon for a second. So if you guys want some of my predictions for the D850, I think that the D850 is going to be probably 70 or 80 megapixels, somewhere in between. A lot of people are saying 70, 72 megapixels. Some people are saying like 84 megapixels. Some of these just like weird 
uh, stopping points on the megapixel game, but I don't know. I think it's probably going to be somewhere around 70 or 80 megapixels. A lot of people think it's going to be 100 megapixels. I don't know if it's going to be that big of a jump, but I can tell you I wouldn't complain if it was uh, because I trust that if Nikon made that big of a jump that they would do it for a good reason. They would be able to have the you know, the low light capability to support it. And I'm assuming they would release some kind of better spec sheet on their lenses to tell people which Nikon lenses can handle up to 100 megapixels of quality. Because lenses matter. You can have a 500 megapixel camera sensor, but if your lens in front of it, the glass that actually, you know, handles the image and reflects off the sensor, if your glass can't handle 500 megapixels, then you're not gonna be able to actually shoot a 500 megapixel image quality photo. So anyway, it could be 100 megapixels, that would be great. I think it's gonna be around 70 or 80. I think it's gonna be the same with the Sony uh, A9 or the A7R Mark III, whatever they're gonna call it, um, somewhere around that range, which would be great. I think it'd be great. I think that's a good, a good sweet spot for them to really up their game from 36 megapixels of the Nikon D810, because you're gaining a lot of resolution. I mean, a whole lot. You'd be gaining double if they went um, 80. And then it would be really nice if they added GPS. I think they will. I don't know for sure. I'm hoping they add built-in GPS to the body. I'm also hoping that they will finally get rid of the stupid pop-up flash. I hate that I have a pop-up flash on my D810. I never use it, and it's just an extra opening in the body for moisture to get in. So I hope they just get rid of that and close that off just like they did on the D500. Um, and then I hope that they just have a really killer dynamic range upgrade because right now I love the D810 dynamic range. I think it clocks in at about 14.9 stops, uh, which is amazing by the way. But can you imagine if they took the new D810 to like 15.9 or even 16 stops of dynamic range? I mean, I can't even, I mean, that might just give people a reason to stop shooting in brackets. I mean, who knows? We might be able to have so much information inside of one file that we don't really need to shoot HDR anymore. That would be unbelievable. And by the way, we're heading there. Just so you guys know, we're close. We're definitely heading there, which makes me excited because as much fun as it is to shoot in brackets and HDR, it takes time to blend those together. I use my Wacom tablet here to manually blend all of my uh, HDR bracket. So if I would, was able to just do everything inside of one file, that would be unbelievable for my workflow. It would save me a lot of time and allow me more time to make more images and more money for my business. Um, so that would be great. So I, I'm just looking most forward to dynamic range and resolution. And then if they added built-in GPS, and I'm sure they're going to add the, a new autofocus system, I'm sure they're going to have the autofocus system or at least something a little better than the D5, D500. They're going to have, you know, obviously the, the obvious upgrades, but I'm really specifically focusing on dynamic range and resolution. That would be amazing. And then again, it would be a little bonus for me if they added GPS so that I can actually have all my photos geotagged without having to carry a GPS device with me in the field. That would be great. Uh, as for the Sony, I don't really have many predictions about that because I don't follow a lot of the Sony news. Right now, my mirrorless, uh, my mirrorless eye is looking more on the Fuji thing. Um, I'm kind of considering getting that as a secondary camera kit, but I've said it and I'll say it again. If Sony impresses me at Photokina, I am more than willing to look at getting Sony mirrorless as my secondary kit. Uh, it just kind of depends. But I've heard so many good things about the Fuji X-T2 that um, I'm very, very much considering that. Uh, but again, it all comes back to what is Nikon going to do, right? If Nikon releases this new uh, D810 successor and it's like way more expensive than the D810, then maybe I'll have to forego my secondary kit and just get two of these Nikon cameras um, and spend like 10 grand on that. Because I mean, if they're going to charge, you know, if they're going to be really expensive, then I'm going to have to take my 10 grand and spend 10 grand on two Nikon bodies. Because uh, I'd still rather have an insanely amazing Nikon kit than... Uh, two okay kits. Because right now I have a great Nikon kit. I have great lenses, great Nikon bodies, but I can't wait for this new D810 successor. It's going to be amazing. I'm just like so pumped about it. Uh, I'm going to be live blogging the event, by the way. I'm going to be like looking at every single, every person that's going to be at Photokina. Uh, I'm going to be following their Twitter, their their updates on Facebook, Instagram, their blogs. I'm going to be following the Photokina blog. So anything that I know, if you guys head over to my website, which is findingmiddleearth.com, I'm going to have a page on my website called Photokina just for the uh, the certain days of the events, and I'll be live blogging uh, you know, what I think about the new stuff that's coming out. 
Um, and so, yeah, so when, whenever they actually, whatever day at Photokina, they actually release the new cameras, that's the day that I'll be just blogging nonstop. And, um, it's just, I don't know. I'm so excited. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, this is like Christmas for me. It's, it's going to be amazing. So, uh, again, let's start some fun conversation in the comments. I want to know everybody's opinion. I want to know what you guys think about it. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.